This program is recorded and presented by Chippewa Valley Community Television. The audio for this program can be heard on WRFP LP 101.9 FM. Chippewa Valley Community Television presents Your Local Race. Meet the Candidates 2016. Hi, I'm Bob Brown, News Director at Chippewa Valley Community Television. Welcome to another in our series of interviews with candidates for at-large seats on the Eau Claire City Council. Today I'm speaking with Dave Strobel. Dave, thanks for that. Hello. Incumbent candidate. He's been on, uh, he's seeking his second term on the, on the council. Dave, why don't we begin by telling the voters, of, you know, those who may not know you yet, a little bit about yourself and why it's important to you to continue on serving on the council. Uh, yes, well, I'm, I'm uh, originally from Antigua, Wisconsin. I came to Eau Claire, uh, went to college here. It's where I met my wife, and uh, uh, we settled down here. We've lived on the same home on the East Side Hill for the last 32 years. Um, I've always been involved in the community uh, through my neighborhood association, where I spent 10 years on the neighborhood association working on some problems there. Then I was a plan uh, appointed by the uh, City Council to the Plan Commission, where I served two years prior to running for City Council um, three years ago. And so th I'm just finishing my first three-year term. Uh, on the City Council and I've always been involved in community service and I just uh, felt that my um, background uh, with the Neighborhood Association with businesses I own a commercial property in downtown Eau Claire as well so my familiarity with that I thought could lend itself to uh, some of the decisions the council's making. Let's see the East Side is that the the East Side Community Association? The uh, East Side Hill Neighborhood Association. There we go. There we go. Correct. I should know since I live on the East yeah, Side. <laughs> Uh, okay, why don't you uh, tell us a little bit about uh, what, what kind of personal qualities you feel you bring to the council that's uh, particularly helpful in, in its deliberations? Well, I think I think I have an ability to get along with others. Um, I'm always I'm always prepared, so I always uh, read my packets. I prepare. I ask questions ahead of time, and so I think that during deliberations, I'm I'm prepared to ask good questions to potentially um, uh, get the best possible solution the council can get. And although a lot of us don't always necessarily agree on all issues, I think we find a way to work together to, for the common good of the city. Okay. During the first three years that you've been on the council, uh, actions that the council's taken or, or the things that you've done that you're particularly uh, proud of? Um, probably there's, uh, there's been a lot of, <laughs> in the last three years, I'll be honest, it's been extremely, extremely busy on the city council mm -hmm. with the Confluence Project and many of the other uh, uh, projects that we've had, developments that we've had that have gone along with it. But I, I suppose the thing that we'd all be most proud of is uh, the Confluence Project. And I was probably one of the more outspoken critics of parts of that project. I was never against the project as, as it stood. But some of the parts of the project were, as originally proposed I disagreed with. And um, I think through those um, uh, conversations, uh, the council and the city came to uh, um, I think a good resolution on that and that the city is no, no longer the uh, the backstop, the un unconditional backstop uh, for operating losses of that theater. Um, they also are not the owner of that theater. And then the, the um, contribution that was going to the uh, Performing Arts Center through room taxes is also not funneled through the city any longer. It's now funneled through Visit Eau Claire. Um, so I think, I think that we came to a really good solution for that, that the whole community can get behind. Um, it was an 11-0 vote to support that. So that's probably the, the most important project we've had. Um, a couple of the other things that I'm pretty, pretty proud of is I sort of spearheaded the, uh, uh, the effort to get the fourth level added to the parking ramp downtown and um, was able to get enough support from my fellow council members um, to do that. I felt it was important to do it now. Uh, it's the most cost effective to do it while you're building, while the construction crews are there and with the least disruption. And I think I think now with uh, future development coming forward for the liner building where the post office used to be, that developer's already asked us to lease out an extra 200 spaces. I don't think that would be available had we not put that fourth level on. So I, I'm, I definitely think that we needed the parking and I think it was a good time to do it. So that was a pretty, uh, uh, pretty good decision, I thought. Um, also, I, I'll be honest, I'm, I'm proud of uh, something that happened that I didn't win. Um, but as a member of the Landmarks Committee, I, I fought hard to keep the historic buildings from being torn down on Barstow Street. Mm -hmm. um, and, and that uh, lost on appeal at the city council level on a six to five vote. So I was, I was proud to lead that effort, um, even though in the end it did not succeed. Um, and one more thing, sure. <laughs> I get, sometimes I get involved in some things that are a little strange, but um, uh, we, the, the 2719 steam locomotive, the train that we used to have up in Carson Park that the local guys refurbished and got running again, um, there were, that came before the council and, and they wanted to sell it to the, uh, 
uh, Duluth Railroad Museum for a buck. It's probably a million dollar train mm -hmm. refurbished and, and I totally disagreed with that decision. I was able to get a stipulation put in there that we could purchase it back for up to three years. So the clock is ticking on that. We have till July 28th of 2018 if we want to bring it back and, and make a static display someplace for it. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I think those are some of the bigger things. Okay. Now, assuming you return to the council for the next three years, uh, things that are uh, issues that are coming up that you uh, particularly uh, uh, feel is important that you for your per personal uh, involvement on the council. Um, I guess I would say that I, I didn't have a personal agenda coming in the last time, and I and I still don't have a personal mm -hmm. agenda. Um, I think you look at each project as they come. You try to prepare. Try to make it. The best possible decision for you know that for the city, um, some of the things I think we'll be looking at a parking utility and, and downtown parking. Um, we're, we're continue to work on those projects, um, but nothing, no particular agenda at this time. I, I guess I didn't really mean an agenda in terms of that, that you were that you personally found important in terms of its effect on the city, not not necessarily, not necessarily yourself. So, so the question your, your would be opi your opinion. And what, what are the important issues that are most important issues that are going to be coming up in the next three years? Oh, I think, I think we're going to have some budget constraints. I think we're going to have to make some tough decisions on, on um, programs we want to continue or discontinue or, or how we allocate probably uh, strict s resources. Um, I think we're going to continue to see development downtown. Uh, um, uh, the South and North Varsa are both going to have new developments. Um, we have the Cannery District on uh, uh, West River Bank over there. Um, and uh, then also you're going to have the, probably the starting of the uh, project on Menominee Street at the University with the Convention Center mm -hmm. and their, their um, development. So I would think that those are all going to be key things in the next three years. Okay, okay. Uh, you know, city government covers all kinds, you know, as many different types of uh, operation. You've got police departments and fire departments and parks and uh, economic development. Uh, out of all these different aspects of city operations, which as a councilman do you find most interesting to, to or most important uh, to uh, to deal with. Wow, they're all important. That would be the, the key there any that you feel like you know you bring up a, a, a sort of particular expertise that particularly well, beneficial when dealing with issues. Well, I think I think I I have a a, a great understanding of the downtown area and, and that the type of development going on down there with the parking needs and and all the different uh, um, backgrounds there. I, I mean, I also bring a neighborhood uh, viewpoint as well, since I was on the Neighborhood Association for 10 years. Um, on the council itself, I'm, uh, I'm the chair of the Fiscal Policy Advisory Committee. So a lot of the changes that, that come through, they sort of funnel through our committee, and, and we've had a lot, of, uh, a lot of changes that we brought forth, so. Okay, okay. Uh, council, I know this, this might be a little repetitive, but out of all the things we talked about in, or that, that in the three years that you've been on the council, Decisions that the council made that you you feel particularly that you were very most strongly in support of. In support of. Right. Um, we'll get to the flip side of that coin next. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you know, I, I, is there anything that really stands out? Of course, I, I think I sort of mentioned the the, the big projects, right. and, um, well, the confluence project, and, okay. and uh, the you know, the parking ramp, and, mm -hmm. and those projects. Uh, okay. How about an action that the council took that you? most really strongly disagreed with? Well, I, again, so, sort of talked to that one as well. I was very disappointed in the uh, decision uh, on the Landmarks Commission tearing down the oh, building. Right, right, I, okay. I, you know, I, I thought that was the wrong decision, and, and, but it's the decision, and I, what I found is, you know what, I'm not always, I'm not always all the votes. So mm -hmm. um, and what happens is you have to understand that it's a council decision, and, and once those votes are made, then you move on, mm -hmm. you move forward. Okay. So. Are you satisfied with the, with the way the, the, the council, its policies and procedures, the way it operates? Is there any changes you might suggest, whether in terms of efficiency, fairness, or any other reason? Um, I've, I've had, I have a few disagreements on, on how the council runs on some things. I, I wasn't real excited about our process uh, that we went through with the, the prior city manager, and, and I, was, I think I was a little bit outspoken, and I thought that we should have had a um, a national search for the new city manager, mm -hmm. and that's not to say anything. I, I totally agree with the decision we made on who we hired. Mm -hmm. So that that's not it. It was more of a process that I thought we should have gone through. And then probably the other thing that that I really don't agree with is um, the uh, the limitation on council members on how many questions they can ask a presenter at council. Um, that that's a, a city council president directive, 
and um, it limits us to two questions with presenters and sometimes when you have really complicated decisions it could take you two questions just to get any, the answer you're looking for and then you're done um, and, and a lot of these things are, are extremely long um, it's not really strictly enforced but it, it's out there and I wish I wish we didn't have it mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, now I know, you know the city council like just about every unit of local government uh, over the past several years has seen its uh, a, a, a financial support from the state and federal sources dwindling uh, do you have any new ideas for how the council can can deal with that those, those sort of fi fiscal challenges that that are that are always there before them um, I, I don't really have any new ideas for that um, I would say that uh, you know all the development we're doing downtown everybody thinks that's great you're, you're building all these buildings and you should increase your property tax base by doing that but remember those are in a tax incremental finance district and and the, the money earned from the property taxes they pay is actually going to pay off the bond in that TIF district and some of those TIFs are 30 years old 30 years so it may be a long time before we see any any benefit from those developments um, um, so I guess what I would concentrate on if we all have a, we have a limited revenue mm -hmm. and we're going to continue to do that so I guess I would concentrate on your core services you know your roads your snow plowing uh, your public public safety uh, mm -hmm. police and fire and um, those would be the areas that I think we would have to concentrate on doing and doing well for the city your core services mm -hmm. so as, as an individual council member you know and what's your philosophy in terms of how you approach that that balance that you have to maintain between what sh what you know city residents want and what the fiscal realities, uh, the limitations that the, that the board is operating under? Well, I think, I think you always, you know, nobody's ever going to think the same way on anything. So I think you have to look at the greater good and, and what's, what's going to work for the majority, you know, with, based within, within the, the constraints that you have. And, you know, we try to get uh, options presented to us as well. So, I mean, that's one of the things that councils ask for is, is give us some options here. You know, don't just don't just come to us and say, you know, we're going to cut this much money and, and here's where it's going to be. You know, give us some choices so that we can help make decisions. Okay. Okay. Um, econ you know, the, the economic issues obviously are, are the biggest. Uh, issues that maybe are, don't get as much attention that, that you see coming up that maybe, you know, might, uh, th that might be a surprise to, to residents when, when they do arise that you see coming up in the not too distant future? Uh, I'm trying to think of those. Uh, There's always a lot of talk about the Confluence Project and the downtown. Well, we, we, had, we had the downtown parking. We, uh, you know, we, we're, we're going through that whole thing. We had a parking study done, and we're trying to implement a lot of those parking changes. Mm -hmm. Those, are, those ca caught some people by surprise, some mm -hmm. of the enforcement measures and stuff. Um, you know, on, on street now, it's, a, it's a seven days a week, uh, two-hour parking from 6 a.m. to 6 p.m., and that caught some people off, off guard a little bit. What they're trying to do there is, is get some turnover of those on-street parking stalls. I think also we're going to look at new um, parking uh, um, enforcement technology, uh, license plate readers and stuff, so that I think you're going to see a little bit more strong enforcement of some of those rules downtown uh, with the hope that we'll, the people that work down there and their employees will we'll use the ramps, and we're looking at some uh, pricing alternatives on the ramps um, to give people some options maybe. So I think, I think that's going to be a mindset, but as these other developments come online, there's going to be a huge demand for parking downtown. You've got a mixed-use building with mm -hmm. uh, uh, several restaurants, 400 students. Um, they don't all have parking. Um, and then you're going to have the uh, Performing Arts Center. The, the Lismore Hotel is coming online. They're going to have a lot of events at the uh, convention center there. So we're, we're trying to get ahead of that right now. Mm -hmm. And um, so I, th I think those are things that people are going to have to get used to. Eau Claire's go not going to be the same old sleepy downtown that it used to be. Mm -hmm. And so we're, we're trying to get ahead of that with these parking rules right now. Okay. Well, uh, is there any, in our final minute we have here, uh, any last words uh, you'd like to say to the voters, something they should keep in mind about you as they head into the voting booth on April 5th? Um, I, th I think I would just ask them to know that I prepare well. I, I prepare well. I, I read everything. I ask questions. And I try to ask good questions. I try to, uh, to make the decisions that, that the council is making the best possible uh, decisions that we can make so I, I sometimes bring things through and change some of the things that have come forth mm -hmm. and I, I think I work with other council members well and um, we've got a pretty good re working relationship and, and none of us not all of us think alike but but we all know that and and we find areas of common interest to work together so I think that's working really well and then the other thing I'd like to say is I am a little disappointed to be quite honest that more people don't step up 
to run for council. The last time I ran, there was 11 people for five seats. This time, we really don't have any competition for our seats. And, and it's, a big, it's a big time commitment, um, but especially when you own your own business like mm -hmm. I do. Um, but I think it's a public service, and I wish more people would step forward. Well, hopefully we'll inspire them. Dave, Dave Strobel, incumbent candidate for a seat on the Oak Park City Council. Thanks for being with us today. And thank you for watching. Please tune in to Channel 994 for all our interviews with candidates for these seats on the City Council, the Eau Claire School Board, and the Eau Claire County Board. Uh, and then on election night, tune in to Channel 994 for all the latest returns beginning at 9 p.m. Thank you very much. This program was recorded and presented by Chippewa Valley Community Television.